Hey there, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the impact shoe weight has on your running performance. I'm making this video because I previously made a video comparing the weights of two of my running shoes. My heaviest running shoe, the Nike Infinity Run 4 GTX, with one of my lightest, the Nike Vaporfly 3. And in the comments of that video, it was pointed out that I should attach weight to the shoe, in this case the Vaporfly 3, rather than comparing two different shoes. The different shoes have different foams and different dynamics. And in this video, I'm going to do exactly that. As always, this video might be long. The chart mark is down below, so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. I also made a video about adding weight to myself by means of a weighted jacket. And there'll be links to both the previous weight-related videos in the description below and at the end of this video. John Burchett Sharp commented that the test was flawed in some respects because when you add weight to yourself in a natural way, it's reasonably evenly distributed around your body, whereas the weighted jacket was all, all the weight was added to the torso. He was or is, of course, right. But the same problem occurs with the running shoe, how to evenly distribute it around the shoe. Now, my original plan would have been to take a shoe and get a larger shoe and pretty much things would go in proportion. But the problem is the shoe I take is a US men's 13, UK 12, EU 48. So I couldn't simply get a bigger shoe because there's only one size and there's not enough gap for the data. So I couldn't do that. So I had to come up with a plan to add weight to myself or the shoe that would make reasonable sense. So I bought myself some car lead weights that they usually use on tires. The difficult bit was how to distribute the weight evenly and where to put them. If I put these are the strips, if I put them under foot, they would change the running feel and the shoe dynamics completely. My plan had been to lay them flat across the bottom, but I knew you'd be then running effectively on metal, change the dynamics in the feel. Then I thought I'd put them across the forefoot, so just bend them over. They've got uh, double-sided tape and I put them around my heel. So I did that. I was able to reasonably comfortably get an added 600 grams per foot or 21.16 ounces per foot per shoe. Now for the science bit. I'll put some links to academic articles in the description, but simply put, for every 100 grams of additional weight you add per shoe, you lose speed by about 1%. That's an academic formula that's been around for a while. And the limitations of this kind of test are that, well, just like artificial intelligence AI uses a large language model, I would like to use a large running model, but I can't. There's only one lab rat, the lab rat's old, the data set is small. That being said, we might have some fun and we can draw some limited conclusions. You could ask yourself, as I did, if 100 grams of shoe weight affects performance by 1%, when you add five kilograms of backpack weight, why is performance not affected by 50%? Now, the thing is the shoe weight is a pendulum. It's right at the end of your body and without going into the law of the lever, according to Archimedes and all sorts of other stuff, it's all about where the weight is and the tighter in, the closer to your center of gravity is preferable and you lose less performance. You can also ask yourself, as I did, did you really add weight to the shoe if the weights were on your foot? And in one sense, no, but I added weight as close as possible to the shoe without changing the dynamics of the shoe. You could drill into shoes and, and put the weights inside and do all sorts of things, but they would fundamentally change the shoe. So I was trying not to change the shoe, but to add weight to my feet and to be reasonably distributed. As I put the curved pieces over my foot, on this part of the foot, they were a bit sore, so I, because it was, it was digging in as I hit the ground. So I was able to just take them off and stick them. They were double-sided tape and stick them on the top and make a sort of pile there and a pile around the back. And surprisingly, they were comfortable to run in. The shoe of choice for testing is the Nike Vaporfly 3 in a UK 12, EU 47.5. I think I previously said 48, it's 47.5. US men's 13. And then this size, the weight as tested is 242 grams, 8.54 ounces. And I added 600 grams, 21.16 ounces to each shoe. I walked down to the Irish Town Stadium in the weighted shoe. The plan was to go on the treadmill to run 
with and without the added weights in the Vaporfly 3 to run at a constant pace on the treadmill to test the performance and see how much more power it took to achieve at the same pace. Then the plan was to go onto the track and run with and without the weights on the shoe to do 800 meters and pick a 400 meters segment and to see to run at the same power measured on my stride about 305 watts and see how much the pace dropped when the power was the same with and without the weights. So how did all that go? Well pretty well the weights were interesting. I walked three miles in them because I walked up to the gym, realized I'd forgotten my watch, <laughs> uh, went home, re, uh, came back. And uh, then the first thing I did was I ran the track session, two laps, 800 meters pretty much, with the weights on at a constant power, about 305 watts. That was the aim using the stride foot pod. And then I went in to the treadmill, where I ran for two minutes at 12, I warmed up first, two minutes at 12 kilometers an hour and then two minutes at 14 kilometers per hour. And then got off the treadmill, took off the weights and then reversed the process with uh, the weights off. And uh, back to the house now, analyze the data, see how it got on. To analyze the heart rate data, from the treadmill. I ran at a constant speed. I, I warmed up first, then I ran at 12 kilometers per hour for two minutes, and then I ran at 14 kilometers per hour, or 8.7 miles an hour for another two minutes. And I took a middle segment, middle minute from the last segment for the data. I was tracking the heart rate with and without the weight. I was tracking it with my Garmin F or 955 with my Garmin HRM Pro chest strap monitor. And the Vaporfly 3 with the additional 600 grams, which was the one I ran in first, I ran the harder one first, it was 160 beats per minute heart rate and then 174 steps per minute was the cadence. And when I took off the weight I, and ran at the same speed on the treadmill, comparing the heart rate was over, it was 158 beats per minute. And it was interestingly, the, uh, the, the cadence was higher, 177 steps per minute. And as I said, I ran it the weighted first and it wasn't as big a difference as I thought, but possibly because the uh, non-weighted was the second one. But yeah, you're certainly working harder, higher heart rate when you had the weight. I ran 800 meters on the track with the Alpha Fly 3 with and without the weights with the stride foot pod measuring running power. I was trying to run at a constant running power and I set a target of 305 watts. It's kind of what I did the last time, a, comf a comfortable pace to or comfortable power to be running at. The idea was to put the same power in and then you could uh, check the difference in speed. That was basically the idea and with and without weight and doing a consistent but limited set so you weren't getting tired. So fatigue wasn't really coming into it. And I was pairing it with my Apple Watch Ultra. That was the plan of the race that, or the, the run. And based on the science, you'd expect to be about 6% slower because there were 600 grams. That's the kind of scientific equation. But actually in the, uh, I was about 3 point, I think I'm about, I was 3.025% slower, but that was about 11 second difference per kilometer. I was running at four minutes 48 per kilometer with the weight and four minutes 39 per kilometer without the weight. I, I mean, you notice it easily. I was I was really comfortable running the, the whatever way I, I managed to distribute the weight around, it actually was quite comfortable. And because these things can be torn off into small little strips, you could actually make a, uh, you could actually get to where it was actually very comfortable to run in. What I did find interesting was when I compared the results, now the results were on different days, different weather, different fitness conditions, all that sort of stuff. But when I looked at the difference that I had when I ran in my Infinity 4 GTXs and the Vaporfly 3s, the difference was about the same, about a 10 second difference. I think I ran 442 per kilometer in the Infinity 4s and 432 per kilometer in the Vaporfly 3s. Now, again, it's, it's not exactly apples to apples, but yeah, that was the results I got. To come to some limited conclusions. When weight is added to the shoe and you're running on the treadmill, you will work harder to maintain the same speed. When you add weight to the shoe and you're running on the track, now I ran with a very small data set to try and keep the different runs consistent and to mitigate against fatigue. And over a longer distance, you'd have more fatigue. But I was about, it was about a three, three plus, 3% plus difference. 
longer distance that I'd expect that to grow as fatigue would play an increasingly important role. The difference in pace when I was running in different shoes, the Vaporfly 3s versus the Infinity Run for GTXs, or with Vaporfly 3s when I added weights to my feet, was not all that significant. It was roughly the same, not exactly apple to apples, but the, the weight when added to the end of my foot was significant, had a significantly higher impact on performance than when the weight was added to my torso. We did that from the previous tests. And overall, after the three different weight tests, well, weight matters. And the location of that weight really matters. And for performance, keep it lighter and keep it tighter. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there as red videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.